fishy bit. Greetings, fancy people, and welcome back to my jungle. I hope you're all doing fabulous. Oh, you know your leg goes dead. Ah, oh, pins and needles. TV static in my foot. So I thought I would share with you some plants that I would recommend for beginners that aren't a snake plant or a ZZ plant. Because when you Google house plants for beginners, they're the first ones that come up. I mean, they're cool. I've got a few of each. This is like if you wanted to have something a little bit more different you know and all of these are very affordable and easy to get as well which also helps when you're a beginner because sometimes i know the hunt to find a more uncommon plant is quite stressful and intimidating okay let's start off with the first one and this one's just one of my favorites in general and this is the cbu this is the cbu blue epipremnum and oh it's just gorgeous i just love it and i've actually got quite a few of these i think this is my third one i think i'm going to give one of them away because i'm running out of room but i recommend these to pretty much everyone whether you're into collecting rare plants or common plants because this one trails so easily you only need to water it every two weeks or so um, it's not very needy, it's not very dramatic, it grows super quick so you can always take cuttings or trail it up your room or trail it down, whatever you fancy. And I just love this one because it's got such a different kind of colour palette to most of the common plants you'd find. This is just a bit more of a fun one in my opinion to just a classic golden epipremnum pothos. And it's got quite a unique pattern on its leaves, as you can see. It only requires medium to bright light, just no direct light. I would not recommend that because it will get sunburned very easily, like myself. They used to be quite hard to get hold of in the UK, but I think because of tissue culturing and people just snipping them and sending them to people, they're quite easy to find now and they're not too expensive either, which is always a plus for me. <laughs> Let me know what your favourite epipremnum is, I'm curious. Okay, so the next one is a super fun one. You might have seen these in just like restaurants or just someone's corner of their house, but there's a reason why people like these and it's because they're so easy to look after. So this is a Pachira aquatica, also known as the money tree or umbrella tree, not to be confused with the other umbrella tree. They don't need basically any watering, maybe once a month or so. And the best thing is they will let you know when they're thirsty because it'll just look thirsty in general. I got this a few months ago and it was about here. So just the beginning of summer and I keep this one in my bathroom because it's nice and bright <laughs> and it loves the humidity. I love the sound it makes. I love this one. It's also just super rewarding because it grows surprisingly quickly for a tree. Sometimes you can find them plaited like this. It's because their actual stems are a little bit floppy but sometimes you can get them just on their own. But I am on the hunt for a variegated one. These guys are very easy to get a hold of and they're super affordable, super easy. I very much recommend you get one if you're into it. Here we have the Philodendron Brazil. And I will never stop talking about this plant because it's phenomenal and beautiful. I think this is one of the first plants I ever got in my collection because they're so easy to get a hold of, they're so easy to look after, and every leaf is different. So the more light you give it, the more yellow variegation you get, but the less light you give it, the more green variegation you get, which is super fun. So you can control how it looks, which is super fun. But to be honest, this goes for most philodendron because the majority of the common philodendron are so easy. Even some of the uncommon ones, maybe even some of the rare ones. If you want to get a philodendron, even if it's not this one, if you're a beginner, I don't recommend getting a varicosum because she is a diva. They're very easy to propagate, so you can just snip some off, pop some in water, perlite moss, whatever you fancy, and it'll root like within a week, pretty much. Because it's a philodendron, it doesn't require too much light. I'd say medium to bright, depending on how much variegation you want. Water it every two weeks or so. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Oh, should we go for a fun one? This is a string of hearts. So I have always been a fan of these because they're quite dainty and quite unique looking compared to a lot of normal plants. It might be a bit daunting because they're quite intricate looking, but these are so easy to look after. I've got the variegated one, the original one. This is a silver glory, but it doesn't have to be this one. The normal kind are super easy to get. Oh, actually, I've got one right here. Just ignore the fact that it's in a pot that doesn't fit. Can you see the kind of colour difference and shape difference? So Silver Glory, original. These are so easy to look after and I just love how they trail down. I think it, they just look really zen, really zen. And if you give them enough light, they give you these really cool looking 
flowers that look a bit like this but purple you don't need to water these very much because they're i think they're classed as a semi succulent so i'd say once a month they also love a bright space if you've got a shelf by the window they would love it absolutely love it so if you want to get into the string of plants there are quite a few different varieties but i in my opinion find these easiest i wouldn't recommend a string of pearls i've killed three and it'll break your heart because they look so cool <laughs> these are also very easy to propagate all you need to do is cut in between the stems and pop them in i've had more success in moss with these actually but also i think you can also just plop the whole stem in water or perlite and if you want a bushier top all you've got to do is grab a stem and just coil it on the top make sure it's pressed in the soil and give it a spritz i think i need to do that to this one actually it's getting a bit Sparse. Okay, last but not least, <laughs> this is my Syngonium Tri-Leaf Wonder. I talk about this plant constantly because I'm such a fan, but it's so underrated. It's so incredibly easy to grow. I bought this on a whim a few years ago now, and it was massive, but it got a bit bare at the bottom because I had a bit of a thrips outbreak. I just chopped loads of stems off, propagated them, and I'm trying again. But as you can see, it bounces back so easily. It's quite easy to get hold of as well. It's super cheap. I know that not everyone's the biggest fan of Syngonium. I clearly am. I just think they're so cool. This one acts as if it was a philodendron. Can you see the aerial roots there? That's philodendron in my eyes, <laughs> even though it is a Syngonium. <laughs> so this one only needs to be watered every two weeks. Doesn't have to be exact, just keep an eye on it. Doesn't mind being a little bit dry and medium to bright light. Depends how quickly you want it to grow. And I would recommend getting a moss pole for this one, which is one I'll be doing soon. When it's trailed a bit more, they love to latch on like a typical aroid does. So yeah, I think that's all of the ones I recommend for now. Let me know if you have any experience with those plants. I would love to know, or let me know what plants you'd want to get into and if you need any advice. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. I'll leave all my socials down below. I'm very active on Instagram and TikTok. So yeah, be my planty friend. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.